John Reyes blinked sweat and grit from his eyes as he wrestled with the melting guts of the malfunctioning terraformer, the skin on his hands blistering under Alicia IV's punishing heat. He had mere hours to fix the machine before the planet's soaring temperatures killed off the human colonists huddled in their failing climate shelters. Remarkable, Overseer Pryler said, his heat frills flaring as he watched John work at a feverish pace. Your species thrives where most perish. Humans adapt. We endure, John grunted. His muscles burned as he forced a warped valve shut and welded it in place. Noxious gases hissed from ruptured tubes. Molten metal dripped on his arms. Pryler's obsidian eyes glinted. The Council will be quite interested in your abilities. You must enlighten them in person. John hesitated. The other colonists were counting on him. Without the terraformer to cool the encampment, they'd roast alive. But an audience with the Elysian Council could win humanity crucial allies and resources. In the galactic arena, where humanity was still an underdog, they needed every advantage to survive. I'll do it, John said. The words tasted bitter as Elysia IV's toxic air. He prayed it wasn't a mistake. The wind howled and sand scoured the vehicle's exterior as we raced across Elysia IV's barren landscape. Through the viewport, I could barely make out the hazy silhouette of the Elysian capital in the distance. My hands were still raw and blistered from repairing the terraformer. Pryler was saying something about the wonders the Council would show me, but his words were lost in the storm's fury. I nodded along absently, my mind racing. I had a bad feeling in my gut that I couldn't shake. Suddenly a massive sand dune loomed ahead of us, materialising out of the tempest. Pryler swerved to avoid it, but the vehicle's stabilisers failed. We rolled once, twice, metal screeching and glass shattering. I felt a sharp pain in my shoulder as I was thrown against the door. Forcing the crumpled door open with a groan, I tumbled out into the sand. Pryler was slumped over the controls, his heat frills slack. Purple blood oozed from a gash on his forehead. I didn't stop to check if he was alive. I ran, using the howling winds to cover my escape. Sand stung my eyes and scoured my exposed skin raw, but I pushed forward, drawing on the same endurance that had kept me alive on this hellscape of a planet. After what felt like hours, I stumbled upon a hidden entrance to the underground tunnels I had discovered. While working on the terraformers, I slipped inside, welcoming the cool darkness. In the tunnels I found an old Elysian interface node. Using the mechanical skills I had honed keeping the terraformers running, I managed to splice into the Elysian communication network, what I found made my blood run cold. The Elysians had been kidnapping humans for years, stealing those with unique abilities to exploit for their own gain. There were records of humans with enhanced strength, speed and resilience being taken and experimented on. And it wasn't just humans. The Elysians had been sabotaging the terraforming efforts of other races, keeping them from gaining a foothold on the planet. I had to get this information out, Using a scrambled channel, I contacted Liam and Ethan back at the mining colony. They were shocked when I told them what I had found, but we quickly formed a plan. Liam, tech wizard that he was, would hack into the Elysian database and download proof of their crimes. Ethan, with his diplomatic connections, would reach out to the other races the Elysians had screwed over and rally them against our deceitful hosts. But first I had to survive. It didn't take long for Pryler and his goons to discover my escape. Using thermal imaging tech, they tracked me into the tunnels. I could hear their footsteps echoing off the walls and the whirring of their scanners. I used every trick I knew to stay one step ahead. I set up makeshift traps from scavenged parts, using the planet's brutal environment against them. Rock falls, pockets of toxic gas, flash floods from burst pipelines. I turned the tunnels into a deadly gauntlet. As I ventured deeper into the ancient passageways, I stumbled upon something incredible, a hidden Elysian chamber, untouched for millennia. Inside was an artifact that thrummed with power, covered in glyphs that even my translator couldn't decipher. Somehow I knew it was the key to everything, to terraforming this planet to my survival. 
to humanity's future on the galactic stage, if I could just unlock its secrets. The sound of Pryla's voice echoing from a nearby tunnel snapped me out of my reverie. I stuffed the artifact into my pack and ran deeper into the maze, my heart pounding. The hunt was on. I crouched in the dimly lit chamber, the ancient Elysian artifact cradled in my hands. Its surface was cool to the touch, a stark contrast to the oppressive heat that permeated the tunnels. As I ran my fingers over the intricate glyphs etched into the metal, a flood of information poured into my mind. I saw Elysia IV as it once was, a verdant paradise teeming with life. Lush forests stretched across the continents, crystal-clear rivers snaked through valleys, and the air was sweet and pure. But then, in a flash of blinding light, everything changed. The Elysians' ancestors, driven by an insatiable hunger for power, had unleashed a terrible weapon. It tore through the atmosphere, igniting the very air itself. The planet's climate was altered in an instant, transformed into the scorching hellscape I now struggled to survive in. But as the vision faded, I understood the true depths of the Elysians' deception. They had adapted to this harsh world over countless generations, their bodies evolving to withstand the extreme conditions, and they guarded this secret fiercely, knowing that their dominance depended on it. But the artifact offered a glimmer of hope. Within its ancient circuitry lay the key to undoing the damage, to restoring Elysia IV to its former glory. I knew what I had to do. I tapped into my comm unit, my voice urgent as I contacted Liam and Ethan. Guys, listen up. I need you to gather every scientist and engineer we've got. I'm sending you data from an Elysian artifact. It's our chance to fix this planet, but we need to move fast. There was a crackle of static. Then Liam's voice filled my ear. We're on it, John. The eggheads are already analyzing the data. Looks like the artifact is some kind of control device for a network of climate machines. They're hidden deep underground. But if we can power them up... We can reset the planet's climate, I finished, a grin spreading across my face. But we need a hell of a lot of energy to do it. That's where the Elysian's mining operations come in. I outlined my plan, hijacking the mining facilities, diverting the resources to the ancient machines. It was a long shot, but it was our best chance. Ethan chimed in, his voice tight with tension. We'll coordinate with our allies, create some diversions to keep the Elysians off your back. But John, be careful, Prylar's not going to let this go easily. I thought of the Elysian overseer, his cold eyes and ruthless ambition. I know, but we don't have a choice. We've got one shot at this, and we have to make it count. The calm went silent, and I was alone once more in the chamber. I tucked the artifact into my pack and set off into the tunnels, my mind racing with the possibilities of what lay ahead. If we could pull this off, it would change everything. For Elysia IV, for humanity, for the entire galaxy. I made my way to the main mining facility, my heart pounding in my chest. The heat was suffocating, the air thick with the stench of sulphur and molten rock. I could hear the roar of heavy machinery in the distance, the clank and grind of drills boring into the planet's crust. Using the chaos caused by Liam and Ethan's distractions, I slipped past the Elysian guards and into the main control room. My fingers flew over the console, rerouting power from the mining lasers to the ancient climate machines. The ground shook beneath my feet as the energy surged through the planet's core. Suddenly a searing blast of heat knocked me to the floor. I rolled to my feet, my skin blistering to see Pryla standing in the doorway, the Elysian Overseer held a heat-based weapon trained on my chest, his eyes blazing with fury. Did you really think you could steal from us, human? Pryla hissed, his heat frills flaring. Hand over the artifact or I will burn you to ash where you stand. I held up my hands. The artifact gripped tightly in my fist. My mind raced, searching for a way out. But as I stared into the barrel of Pryla's weapon, I knew I was out of options. The fate of the planet hung in the balance, and the next few seconds would decide everything. I ducked behind a control panel as Pryla's heat blast sizzled over my head. The acrid stench of melted metal filled my nostrils. I knew I couldn't beat him in a straight fight, not with that weapon of his. 
but this facility, with its labyrinth of corridors and chambers, was my territory. I'd spent weeks mapping out every inch of it while planning this operation. Oh, you can't hide forever, human, Pryla snarled, his footsteps echoing on the metal grating. I'll burn this whole place down to get that artifact. I slipped through a maintenance hatch, my makeshift heat-resistant suit scraping against the edges. The suit was a patchwork of insulating materials I'd scavenged from the mining equipment, far from pretty, but it would buy me a few precious seconds against Pryla's attacks. The chamber I emerged into was one I knew well. Its walls were lined with containment units, filled with volatile mineral compounds, byproducts of the Elysian's relentless mining. The air shimmered with the heat radiating off them. I positioned myself in the centre of the room, the artifact gripped tightly in one hand. You want this so badly, Pryla? I called out. Come and get it. The Elysian burst into the chamber, his eyes wild with rage. He levelled his weapon at me, but I held my ground. A duel, Pryla. You and me, right here. Winner takes the artifact. Pryla hesitated, his gaze darting around the room. For a moment I thought he'd seen through my ploy, but his pride and anger won out. You're a fool, human. I'll incinerate you where you stand. He fired, a blast of searing heat that warped the very air. But I was already moving, diving behind one of the containment units. The beam struck the volatile compounds inside, and the world erupted into chaos. The explosion ripped through the chamber, a maelstrom of fire and shrapnel. I felt the heat wash over me, my suit barely withstanding the onslaught. Alarms blared and emergency lights flickered as the facility shuddered around me. Through the smoke and flames, I saw Pryla lying crumpled against the far wall. His heat frills were charred and his limbs twisted at unnatural angles. He'd been too close to the blast, his own attack turned against him. But there was no time to savour the victory. The explosion had destabilised the entire facility. I could hear the groan of metal under stress, the hiss of escaping gases. I had minutes, if that, before the whole place came down on my head. I raced through the crumbling corridors, my lungs burning with every breath. The artifact pulsed in my hands as if urging me onward. I burst into the central control room, sparks raining down from ruptured conduits overhead. My fingers flew over the console, rerouting the last of the resources to the climate machines. The ground bucked and heaved beneath me as the facility's supports gave way. Warnings flashed across the screens, critical failures, imminent collapse. But I didn't stop. I couldn't. The fate of this world, of my people, hung in the balance. With a final desperate command, I sent the full power of the Elysian's mining operations surging into the ancient machines. And then, with a deafening roar, the facility imploded around me. Metal screamed and stone shattered as I ran, hurling myself through a collapsing doorway just as a tidal wave of debris crashed down behind me. I emerged into the scorching heat of Elysia IV's surface, my suit torn and my skin blistered, but as I staggered away from the ruins of the facility, I felt a cool breeze brush against my face. The wind was changing, the air growing clearer. High above the sky was shifting, the eternal red haze giving way to a startling blue. Liam's voice crackled over the comm, barely audible through the static. John, it's working. The temperature's dropping planet-wide. Whatever you did down there... I sank to my knees in the sand, a laugh bubbling up from my chest. We had done it. Against all odds, we'd given this world a second chance, given our people a future. But even as I savoured the triumph, I knew it was only the beginning. The Galactic Council would want answers, and the Elysians would be out for blood. There were battles still to come, in boardrooms and council chambers rather than on the sands of Elysia IV. I looked up at the brightening sky, feeling the weight of the artifact in my hands, a symbol of the secrets this planet still held, and the power that came with them. The game had changed, and humanity had just become a major player. I rose to my feet, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. For my crew, my people, and the future we would build together among the stars. The Galactic Council chamber was a cacophony of voices, 
as I took my seat at the human delegation's table. Representatives from a dozen different species argued and gesticulated, their translators struggling to keep up with the rapid-fire debate. At the center of it all was the question of Elysia IV's future. Silence! The counselor, an ancient Zolarian with shimmering purple scales, slammed his tentacle on the podium. The room fell quiet. We have reached a decision. Elysia IV will be placed under the jurisdiction of a joint human Elysian task force to oversee the planet's rehabilitation and ensure the fair distribution of its resources. I felt a surge of pride as the counselor's gaze fell on me. John Reyes, in recognition of your role in exposing the Elysian's wrongdoings, you are hereby appointed as the human representative on this task force. The weight of the responsibility settled on my shoulders like a physical burden. I caught Pryla's eye across the room, his heat frills flaring with barely contained rage. This wasn't over, not by a long shot. First out we do sirs. I wiped the sweat from my brow as I surveyed the progress of the terraforming machines. The ancient Elysian artifact had given us the key to reversing the damage done to the planet's climate, but it was proving to be a double-edged sword. The machines, designed for a long-lost ecosystem, were struggling to adapt to the changed environment. Erratic weather patterns and natural disasters were becoming more frequent, undoing much of the progress we had made. John, we've got a problem. Liam's voice crackled over the comm. The southern continent is experiencing massive flooding. The machines in that region are malfunctioning. They're stuck in a feedback loop. I cursed under my breath. Dispatch a repair team, priority one. We need to get those machines stabilized before the whole continent is underwater. As I coordinated the response efforts, I couldn't shake the feeling that we were fighting a losing battle. The machines required constant maintenance and adjustments, sucking up resources and manpower that we couldn't spare. In the task force meetings, tensions were running high. The Elysians, led by Pryla, were pushing for more control over the machines, citing their adaptational advantage. The other races were growing increasingly concerned about the accessibility of the planet's resources. I knew something had to give. We couldn't keep pouring effort into a system that was fundamentally flawed, and so I made a decision that would change everything. The task force erupted into chaos as I laid out my proposal. We need to deactivate the machines, I said, my voice cutting through the din. They're doing more harm than good. We have to let the planet find its own balance over time. Pryla was on his feet in an instant. His heat frills flared in anger. You would doom us all, human. Without the machines, we Elysians will lose our adaptational advantage. We'll be as vulnerable as the rest of you. I stood my ground, meeting his gaze unflinchingly. The machines are a liability, Pryla. They're causing more problems than they solve. We have to think about the long-term future of this planet, not just our own interests. The other races were divided. Some nodded in agreement, while others looked uncertain. I knew I was asking them to take a leap of faith, to trust in the resilience of the planet itself. But before we could reach a consensus, all hell broke loose. The first explosion rocked the task force headquarters, sending debris and shattered glass flying. I hit the ground, my ears ringing as alarms blared and emergency lights flickered. We're under attack. Someone shouted, their voice barely audible over the chaos. It's the Elysian extremists. I caught a glimpse of Pryla through the smoke, a twisted grin on his face. He had a detonator in his hand, his heat frills pulsing with a manic energy. You brought this upon yourselves, he screamed. The Elysians will rise again, and the galaxy will tremble before us. I scrambled to my feet, my mind racing. Pryla and his followers were trying to seize control of the climate-regulating machines to use them as a weapon. I had to stop them before it was too late. The battle raged across the planet's surface, a desperate struggle for control of the machines. Liam, Ethan and I rallied our allies, humans and aliens alike, to fight back against the extremists. But Pryla was always one step ahead, sabotaging the machines and causing widespread destruction, 
Cities crumbled, continents burned, and countless lives were lost in the chaos. In the end, we managed to stop Pryler and his followers, but at a terrible cost. The machines were damaged beyond repair, their ancient circuits fused and melted, and the planet's climate, already strained to the breaking point, was left in a state of total flux. I stood on the launch pad, watching as the last evacuation ship prepared for takeoff. The Galactic Council had made the difficult decision to abandon Elysia IV to relocate its inhabitants to safer worlds. But I couldn't bring myself to leave. This planet, for all its dangers and challenges, had become a part of me. I had fought for it, bled for it, and I couldn't abandon it now. Liam clasped my hand, his eyes filled with concern. John, are you sure about this? Staying here alone? It's a death sentence. I managed a tired smile. Someone has to stay behind to monitor the planet's recovery, to try to find a way to restore the balance. I owe it that much. Ethan pulled me into a fierce hug. We'll be back for you, John, someday when the planet is stable again, I promise. I watched as my friends boarded the ship, their silhouettes fading into the distance. The roar of the engines filled the air, and then they were gone, leaving me alone on the launch pad. I turned to face the horizon, the wind whipping at my hair. The planet was still in turmoil, its skies choked with ash and its surface scarred by the battles that had raged across it. But beneath the chaos I could feel the faint stirrings of life. The planet was resilient, it would find a way to heal itself, and I would be there to witness it, to atone for the mistakes we had made. I shouldered my pack and set off into the wilderness, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. Elysia IV was my home now, for better or for worse, and I would fight for it, until my last breath. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.